Right. Good morning. Good evening. Sorry. Good evening, teacher. Can you all hear me? Am I audible? Am I audible to everyone? Can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, yes, madam. Okay. So, okay. So, do you all have any doubts so far that you have learned? You know, we learned about the sounds of the letters and then we learned about how to, you know, uh, teach them the letters and how to help them to recognize the name of the letters and the sound of the letters. You have a name of the letter and sound of the letter. And then the next part is how do we, uh, sorry, uh, how do we, uh, think about the reading part, right? The phonemic awareness. So there are three steps, right? I taught you all three steps. And, and you have, you know, first of all, you do is the, let me share you the screen again. Give me a second. I muted, sorry. So I'll go back again. Okay, so for segment, if a step is segmenting the sound, so when you're segmenting, your segment means you're recognizing, your, uh, getting the child to recognize each letter and the sound. The other one is blending the sound. The second step, that means you uh, join the sounds of the letters and you ask the child to read. So in this, we have three types. One is the blending individual phonemes and then onset on rhyme blending by syllable. So <clears throat> individual phoneme means you are identifying the each letter sound and then you stretch it and you join it and then you can make the word. And the next one is uh, you are given onset word letter and end with a rhyme letters. So here the act is the on the right and M is the on the okay. And the next step is blending by syllable where you have the big words and you break into small parts and then you Spell it out. Another step is manipulating the sounds. Now, this one is very much good so that they learn different words with different meanings and also with uh, sorry, spelling, right? Different spelling. In these three steps, you have addition, you have deletion, and you have substitution. Addition means you add a letter, right? Deletion means you delete a letter and substitution means you change a letter to another. Okay, so that was the step. And then I introduced the CVC and I taught you how you can organize a CVC workshop for the children or worksheet for the children. And then you can introduce them and you can make them uh, to involve with the activity. You are going to do now. Remember, mostly more than writing and reading, it is very much um, they will be able to remember is through activity. Okay. 
Okay. So the next step is hard word magic. Now, what do we do is now if we get um if we get please give me one minute. I'll share you the PDF. Okay, so now what is the hard word magic means? So hard word means you get the student by hard the mean words, right? You get the student by hard the words. For example, uh, and now here you know the short word. So when by looking at the short vowel sounds, they can quickly get the spellings. Now, for example, log, right? So when you say the word log, it is CVC and they can say that it is a short vowel and there are only five short vowels, A, E, I, O, U, right? There are only five letters and they are at A, E, O, R, five sounds. So it is easy for them to identify. Now what happens if they can find out, well, no, what if they have the long vowel sound? For example, uh, you have the word E, double E. So this one gives you the sound E and also E, A. It also gives you the same sound E. Okay? It also gives you the same sound E. And also, now this is an example I'm taking because there are so many there are almost uh, 20 vowel sounds. If you uh, take them together, there are almost 20 vowel sounds. So this is an example. I will tell you another example. So A. Uh, for example, A, let the letter A. A. Sorry, not A. A. The sound E, A. The sound E says the A sound. And the other, there's another one also that if you give this one also, there are some words that you can pronounce the same sound as A. For example, uh, thread. Thread has this sound. They also have the same A sound. Thread. Thread. Did you understand what I'm saying? So when you have these sounds, right, they, they, they have the same sounds, but they have the different spelling, right? They have a different spelling. So how do we teach them? How do we teach them? So this is where the hard word magic, hard word magic plays the role. Okay, so here, E, A, and E. So I have taken the example for these two. So E, A, and E, E. So I'm going to introduce. Now, usually in the Nelson book, you have a different uh, book, a textbook called Aspen. So for each grade, for each grade, there's a book. For grade one, there's a spelling book. For grade two, a spelling book. Grade three, spelling book. So you can do the hard word magic for this spelling session. Right? So I, if you want to, if you want the children to improve their spellings, I really uh, recommend the Nilsa. Right? I will show you the book. Done. So for each grade they have you 
country. So each grade they have. So here it's the spelling book for book one, book two. So for, for until um, the big, they have almost everything. So you can ask the children to get this book and you can, um, you, you will be able to teach the spelling accordingly. And then you can give them activities. And this one, the, the best way of teaching the, uh, the same sound is the hard word magic sound. Can you uh, see the PowerPoint? Is it visible? I hope it's visible. Can you drop me a yes or no? If it's visible. I hope y'all can hear me. Now I don't get any feedback. That's the issue. Can you see the presentation? Can you drop me a yes in the chat box? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, thank you, Shakti, ma'am. Okay, so E, E, and E, A. So how do we do this case? Now, uh, you can see this, right? Now, what I'm going to do is get the children to have a blue heart and a red heart. So I'm going to give the children and I'm going to say that the blue heart means it is E-A. If it's a red heart, it means it should be double E. So blue heart means E-A, red heart means E, e. So both from the same translation. E. It's a long E sound. Okay, now I have given them pictures. Now you can organize these pictures also, right? Now these activities uh, help the children to learn more things and they're really, you know, they will find really fun to, you know, learn. They really find this as a really fun activity to learn. So first of all is B or me. Let's say me. And then you have E. Then you have B and you have C. So meet, eat, B, B and C. So here I'm going to draw the heart. So meet. First of all, you are going to give the heart. I hope you can see the heart. So I'm going to put the blue heart there. And I'm going to also put the blue heart. And I'm going to put a red heart there. I'm going to show you, right? First of all. And then I'm going to put a red heart there. Okay, so after that, I will ask the student to say, now it is me. So I will say, what is the beginning sound? I will ask the late uh, child. So they will say, mm. right now, now, now they have the knowledge of uh, understanding the sound and the letter. Remember that. They are very master in that. So after you master in that part, you are asking the child, yes, the first one, okay? Asking the child to say, me. So, mm. So when you say mm, so I will ask what is the letter makes the sound mm. So if the child can guess the letter M correctly, that means you have succeeded. And then mm, e. what is the sound? Give the sound. What is the letter? 
So there is the child means the P and the error. Just like that, you're going to introduce the starting sound and the ending sound. So in, here you have only the ending sound. In, the B, what place it gives you sound? They will say, what is the beginning sound and what is the letter gives you the that particular sound? That's how we are going to say. Then here, P. So, E, P. Okay. So, now I will ask the children, what is blue heart mean? So, you are, the child will say, the child will be able to say, it is A. There you go. You are introducing the spelling now. E A, right? I'm writing as well. Here, E E. You're going to ask. So, what you're going to do is you're going to get the children and say, What does blue heart mean? You're asking the children, What is the letter for blue heart? E A, the new write it. E A, then you write the red heart E E, then the red heart E E. Now if the child knows if it's a blue heart, it should be E A. If it's the red heart, it should be E E. Okay. So after this, what you are going to do is you are going to erase it. What you are going to erase it. And then you get the children. You get the children and you are asking them, no, you, are, you know, don't erase the hearts, right? So asking the children to write the spelling without looking, without looking this part. Without looking, when they can memorize, when they understand this the blue heart is E A and the red heart is E P, that means it is in their brain. Right, it's in their mind that blue heart means E A and the red heart means E P. -E. So blue heart means E A. -E. So the child will say E A. -E. Now get the children to come and uh, sit on the board. Get the children to come and write it in the board or give them the letters. Give them the letters. Now you have the letters in your hand and give them. Have the letters and give them. Give them two options, which one is which, and ask them to paste it on the board. Use a blue tag and then I'll go and ask them to put them in the correct order. You can put the picture, right? You can, after picture is in this, you can put the picture here, you can put the picture there. Mix the picture and then ask the child to paste the correct spelling. Okay, after that, what I'm going to do is, after the child paste, and if the child can get all the letters correctly, right? What you're going to do is you're going to erase everything. Okay? You're going to erase everything. And you're going to, have, now imagine this is a whiteboard. Right? So this is a whiteboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the first picture here. So I'm going to remove everything. I'm going to remove the pictures, everything, and the heart. So I'm going to give the first picture. So let's say this is the me. Okay, uh, the first picture, right? I'm going to give that, and then I'm going to ask. Oh, okay, fine. Can you come and write? We are going to ask the who can come and write this. So if the children have by heart, now the child has, after doing that activity so far, the child has by heart, right? That is why we call heart word. The word is in your heart. So the child will be able to come upon and write like that. And the next one, you're going to introduce the next one. And then you're asking the child to come and write. Understood? They're asking the child to come and write. You can give this picture, the B picture, right? And the child will say the B, so I know it starts with B and has double E. Child knows that. So this is the hard word magic activity. 
So do you have any doubts so far? Do you have any doubts that you can clear it, clear it up now? Teachers? Anything like, you know, if you have a doubt, like you have a different step that you really wanted to know, or is it like you really didn't understand any step of this? Do you have any doubt? You all can put a chat, I'll give you five minutes. Go through and if you have any part where you didn't understand, just talk to me on chat or you all can unmute yourself and talk to me. Okay, so there's no doubt. Yes, you are. Okay. You want it up? Okay. I Do you have any doubt? Do you have any doubt? No, so far. Okay. So I hope it's clear. Right, so how to introduce a, a long vowel sounds, and if you have now, especially always have a guidance book. Okay, if you can get a guidance book from the internet, or if you have a guidance book, so what I follow is the Nelson for each grade. For each grade, there's a, a grammar, comprehension, and the grammar book in Nelson. So you have the three subjects, and I usually for the phonics, I follow the phonics, the Oxford phonics book. So those are the books I follow. And if, uh, if, if so, if I believe that I have need some activities more for the child, even though uh, that uh, this one is more, if the child needs more activity, then uh, y'all can, you know, introduce, uh, y'all can uh, get worksheet from uh, internet or go through all your, you can create one of it. Okay, uh, someone has asked if the child can remind only blue heart and red heart. No, you can introduce any different colors, right? Blue heart and red heart is one of the uh, basic color that I gave, right? It's a common uh, color I gave. So y'all can use any different colors, that doesn't matter, okay? So this is one of the best way that you can introduce the one that you can uh, give. Now, this one is usually for a group activity, right? I'm talking about a group activity when you're giving. So if you have, this, now you know, right? When you're having children in different uh, ages, but they fall into the same category. Oh, even though they are it's a grade nine student, she or he or she, will be unable to perform like a grade nine student. She must be very weak that she will be considered as a grade five child. So you can get, now there are some students like that, right? So y'all can get them into one group and you can perform this activity. Okay? So for according now, grades do not depend on, uh, you know, uh, don't think that grades, Okay, uh, the grades will be separated. Okay, now grade nine, 
but there are students who are like in, even in grade nine they are very big that you have to do all the uh, from the beginning so you should be able to put them into groups wise and you should be able to do the math right so according to the knowledge group now whenever you take the children in always test their knowledge give them papers give them half papers or anything you can download it in the uh, internet give them the papers and they ask the children to do if they and then you categorize it if the child is worth of a grade nine knowledge or should he or he go back right they should have a step down and learn the a grade five and then it is possible for that first to come so you all have to be thorough with how the child is in the path right if, if, if the child going in the correct path has the child improved did you understand so it is a duty of your so you all can't always uh, get the book and you know go through okay fine now you are in grade nine take the grade nine book and then you just finish it up no so if the child has a weak part, you have to go back to the beginning part or grade five, ask the child to get a grade five, a, a, a guidance book that you follow, you can follow. There are so many, there, there's Oxford, you can follow, uh, I can't remember the name of the book. There are so many books that you can, okay? Uh, Okay. So that is what you all have to do. Make sure that the child is able to, you know, uh, in, get them into a right spot. Okay, so don't any doubt so far? No, right? So now I'm going to move on to the next step is the child psychology part. So this one will definitely help you to improve. That means, uh, for example, after you understand how the child's cognitive, cognitive development of the brain, right? After the child's cognitive development of the brain, your session that you will be able to understand how the child is the child of a uh, mindset is working like how is he or he thinking for example they are not us right for example let's say for a bigger child for a bigger child if we say me okay i'm giving the word me so for a bigger child what happens is the child can use the dictionary right the child can use the dictionary and turn the pages and find the meaning and then the child can say, this is the meaning, this is what I mean. But for a grade one child, if the child doesn't know what is a meat, you have to show a picture. Right? You have to show a picture. You can't you can't just go and give the dictionary as though I don't know, you find the meaning. You can't do that, right? So for each age, there's a difference of teaching. And how to control them according to the age. That is how uh, that is the most important and the fun part. You all need to know. Okay. So we have completed the step. Now we are going back to the uh, child psychology part, the cognitive development, and please give you one minute until I share the video. Okay, so someone has messaged me saying, uh, what is a suitable book 
use for phonics. So there are so many different books, you know, but you should go through them. I have not recommended, I, I have not I have not go through the other because I when I went through the Oxford, now yesterday I showed you the book that I use. It has brought a really huge, I mean, uh, a change. It was a really a good change that it brought to my children and they were able to understand the letters almost quickly. So Oxford phonics book, uh, which I got it through internet, actually you have to pay it up and get it as a PDF. I don't find, I didn't find any book. So it, uh, fortunately, unfortunately I didn't find it. So there are some books like Kader and all. I have not gone through that yet, but I don't uh, give a huge recommendation for that book, according to me, right? According to me, because uh, the Oxford has a different way of having activities in their own worksheet. And then, uh, and also it helps the child to think through, right? Think through the letters and understanding and then do the activity. And especially if you can't find a proper book, right? You know the letters, and then uh, you can, you know, um, print, print them. You can find printers, well, sorry, you can find worksheets in the internet, and you can print them out, and then you can give the activities. There are so many activities that you can make. <clears throat> right? So it depends on how you teach, actually. It depends on how you teach. And if you do a revision, when you're doing a revision, if the child can be able to recognize without any doubt, right? If the child can be able to recognize with any doubt, that means the child has, uh, you have succeeded, right? You have succeeded. If the child needs progressing, that means you have to change the way of teaching, the way of your teaching and until the child gets. So remember that each and every child are totally, totally different. Okay, that is what, uh, oh, that is how you identify whether you have succeeded or not. If the child has not understood the lesson, if the child continuously makes mistakes, that means you have to change the way of teaching, you have to change the way of uh, uh, giving worksheets or the giving activities. And then you have to find a new book. Now remember that each child is different. Now, if you're having a tuition class, if you're doing a tuition class, and you know that those children come for your tuition because the school teacher has one method, right? This is one of the researchers I have that. They have one method of teaching for all the children. Okay. They have, they, most of the teachers in school, they, uh, they focus on one method of teaching, not everyone, most of them, okay? They focus on one method of teaching that even the, even though they don't consider the weaker ones. And maybe because they are stressful, they have so many classes, and, uh, you know, there are the several sometimes laziness, right? There are some patients who are very laziness. Lazy, okay? Give me one minute.
Okay, so now we have come to the cognitive development in preschool. So when uh, the word I have given here is the word one. Now children are very much curious in learning. They're curious. They, they always ask why mother or why teacher, why should I put this? Why should I do this? Why should I do that? They, they have a curiosity mind. Right, they want to learn everything. Why can't I do this? Why, 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 why did this happen? I did this one and this one happened. Why? And what happens here is that mom makes simple and explain to uh, I cure them, but I cut the parents like that, teachers like that. I kill them, but they don't focus on that, right? In America, they don't focus on that, right? Ignore the child's question. Now, when a child comes to you, I may carry that. I mean, you know, they kill a prashya kahana, but never ever ignore, right? Because this is the way they acquire knowledge. This is the way they get in knowledge. Do you understand? So this is the how do you know? They they don't know anything when the child is born. They depend on their five senses, on a main, like what you have here. See, touch, taste, feel, right? So those five senses are the ones which play the role for them. You're going to put them in the house, but they are very curious. The children are very curious in understanding almost if they go to the house. I make a I make a So when, when the child asks a question of why, try to answer. Always try to answer. Okay. So why is the basic question of a child if uh, when you take a cognitive psychology? So if why uh, the word why I can go there. You should know that the child is acquiring a knowledge from you. So when the words they ask why, you have to always give them a proper answer. Right? Always give them a proper answer. So, so when we talk about that part, so the child now, uh, who John P. Pidget was one of the um, the psychological scientists who, you know, worked on the development of the child's brain. Right, he had a very curious understanding, like. How the how do the children acquire knowledge? Right, he has that understanding, and he did experiments with thousands of with so many children. Right, not only one understand of about one. He he suggested, you know, he he looked about the behavior. Right, he looked about the behavior, and he came on four stages. He came. Uh, he he uh, he developed four stages which understood the development of a cognitive. I mean, how do these children think? So these four stages are, the first one is sensory motor stage. The first one is from birth to two years. Okay. The next one is pre-operational stage, which is from age two to seven. They came the Hathamana a pre-option stage. Uh, for two years, we call it sensory motor state. The other one is concrete operational state. It will be seven to eleven years. And formal operational stage twelve and up. So line it keeps on going. Okay, so these are the four stages that we did introduce in the cognitive development of a child's brain. How do they think? How do they move? You know, he, he, he did a research on this. 
and he, you know, went through so many children and he did some researches and he came upon these four stages. And using these four stages, how do the children acquire knowledge? And how are they, how are they thinking, the thinking pattern? And, you know, yeah, the thinking pattern and the understanding pattern. That is what he uh, understood and he came upon these four Okay, when we talk about the sensory motor stage, during this earlier stage of cognitive development, infants and toddlers acquire knowledge through sensory experiences and manipulative objects. A child's entire experience at the earliest period of his of this stage acquires through basic reflections, sensors, and motor response. So during this day, a can they have they uh, have sensors. Sensors they use to acquire knowledge. Sensors by using the uh, fear, by seeing, by tasting, by smelling, by hearing, by touching or feeling. From those only they use to uh, you know, understand this around. Then I make that them if you could do something, because why they use the, you know, the uh, when they develop their senses in the mouth is very strong. So they used to put it inside the mouth to, you know, feel it. To feel it. Right? They used to even 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 in the flow. You know, cut there, there are some people they say, I mean, that, you can't get them crown, because they're curious. They they wanted to, you know, learn something, they wanted to experience. Okay, what is this? They're very curious. From the birth itself, they're curious of learning. You understand? That? They're very curious in this. So, but the basic reflexes. That means basic reflexes can be just like moving hands. They move, they capture, they take, you know, they put it inside the mouth. That is the basic reflex. Sensor, by looking, by hearing, smelling, tasting, motor response, moving from one place to another. They will try to move. That is what uh, the very first stage, how they acquire knowledge. The main stage. Basic reflex again, they move again, but reflexes and basic reflexes and senses, you know, right? Uh, they used to use their senses uh, by seeing. Okay, and then tasting and all motor responses, they belong to the uh, for example, uh, if, you, if the child can see a, a let's say a cockroach in the corner of the room, the child will quickly go. It can crawl, right? It will crawl and then quickly if they try to capture the uh, uh, uh this uh, cockroach, anything like anything, right? Even if it's a pin or anything, if it's a toy, if you try to capture. So you all should be very much, very much aware because in this day, stage they can uh, attack or they can um, they can put anything with dangerous to their mouth. Now recently, what I saw in the uh, Facebook was just I guess uh, yeah today morning or yesterday night I saw what it was a toddler and there there was a it was a Sri Lanka it was Sri Lanka I can't remember. There was a small snake, a small snake, like you know, a small, a small, from this way. It was there near, near the uh, toddler, the small fellow, but it, it, the child didn't know it was a snake. He wouldn't have done any, it had even a cycle, but it is, she just, the child just took and put it in her mouth. And then the snake has been cut up. So it is. My, that is how they acquire. So you all also as parents or teachers, you all should be a caretaker. Okay, you all should be very much aware of this kind of situation. So 
uh, it's like you know 24 hours you come on this time right it's a really tough job so make sure that your case is safe zone baby zone right don't let any uh bad things come near your child and you know always make sure what does your child do right you know? Uh, you know, almost all 24 hours. So uh, that was a really um, a bad site in which I read through Facebook. It was a really bad news. So now, nowadays, also we have uh, mental issues. So you have to be very much aware about that also. Okay. So in this stage, they try to know the world through movements and sensation. Sensation means like touching, hearing, smelling, right? Or uh, tasting. Those are sensations. Learn about the world by basic actions like sucking, grasping, looking, listening. You know, actions looking, listening. The number, uh, if you call the children, they used to look at you and smile, right? So they're like, you know, basically understand. Learn that things continue to exist. But even when they cannot be the object permanent, they can. Eh? For example, um, uh, something like you know, they think that uh, how do we say? Uh, I mean, I'll 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 give you an example for that later on. Realize that they are separate beings from people and objects around them. Okay, now, still now, what do they do is they believe that they are not humans. They, they think that they're someone else. So you are a different being. Or, uh, objects are different beings. They, they think everything is a living thing like that, right? So you are a different, I am different, they are, they are different. Okay? So uh, you are different and the objects are different. And also they think that object, uh, yes, exist means like, you know, they believe that, uh, for example, they believe the other thing is also alive like it. It's alive. Do you understand? Okay. And the other one is they realize that their action can cause things to happen in the world around. It can, they can do, now, for example, if they move the hand, take something and put it back. Like, that their action, action will pula, motor response. Okay, so that is one of the parts. It's good. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Uh, Okay, next one is pre-operational stage. This is the foundation of language development. Language development. Speaking may have been laid during the previous stage, but emergence of the language is one of the major hallmarks of the pre-operational stage of development. So this is the part where they develop to speak. The may well you have to be pretty much aware of how do they pronounce. So basically, um, at this stage, they try to put to smoking classes and, you know, increasing the food vinegar, and uh, they will try to you know, talk to them and, you know, capture the words and understanding it. it. It's really the whole mark. You see, the language is the whole mark, main mark in a way. Better I language to develop it. Okay. So in this, they try to be think symbolically and learn to use words and pictures to represent objects. 
So here they understand the word, what you are talking, right? They understand the word and you show the pictures. And you say, for example, if I have, a, if I wanted to show a cow, I'm going to show a picture of a cow and say, this is a cow. So here you can, now if you have, Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm going to show this one, a picture of a horse. And I'm going to introduce, this is a horse. So the child can remember, okay, this is a horse, right? And then here you, you, you can organize pictograph, pictographic worksheets. Right, like this. And you can show these pictures, you get them in the bicycle. Okay, you can say, you can introduce letters, uh, alphabet, number, nine, you can introduce letters at this thing. Now, this is usually learning from home, right, from mother, especially. You all can make some worksheets and you all can, you know, there are so many books for this toddler. If you go to the bookshop, there are so many Picture dictionary, you can kill it, you know. You can picture it, you can cow, you can get it for the small children. Tend to be egocentric and struggle to see things from the perspective of others. Egocentric can be hurry, selfish. Can you remember, can you? Someone who is a man, he is a man, he is a man, he is a man, right? You know, if he is a man, he is a man, okay? Child will definitely cry like nothing. I want this, and you know, he will try to hit you or beat you, and they will be very selfish during this time. That is my character. Okay. So they are very egocentric, that is, means they're very selfish and they struggle to see from the other person. They don't wear the other person's shoe and see in other person's shoe, right? So what do they do? They will be very selfish, they want this, they want that, they will be very much ego. They have this very huge ego. Okay, getting better with language, they improve their language and thinking. Okay, they start to think, but still tend to think in a very concrete terms. Concrete terms, for example, the monk, I have two glasses. This is a, a flat glass and this is a thin, tall glass. But I'm putting pouring, right? I'm pouring the drink. Yeah, look, I'm just pouring the drink. Drink a cup of carrot. Yeah, may I may same amount, right? Same amount. Can anyone tell me which glass will the child choose? Is it the uh, the short glass or the tall glass? For, uh, what glass do you think they will choose? Tall glass. Tall glass. Yes, they will be choosing the tall glass. Because they believe that if this one has more drink, right? Even though it's the same amount, even though it's the same amount, they think that it has, you know, it is very high and it is tall and it's like, you now when you look through, this, the child will think that this one has a really low amount. This is very high, I can enjoy a lot, right? So this is what you said, concrete. They believe what they see. For example, if you have something and if you have a piece of chocolate or in your hand and then the child asks me, uh, comes and asks, where is the chocolate? Then you say, they will give you that. They're very much concrete in them. Okay? So they are very much concrete. They will under, they, they just believe what you say. And don't go online, okay? So make sure that you don't lie a lot. 
For good reasons, we can lie, but don't like continuously. Okay, so the concrete operational stage. While children are still in very concrete, then how they are in concrete, but but listen, literally in their thinking, can it, even though they have a concrete level, they start to think. Thinking ability, logical ability, improve Okay, they become much more adept at using logic. This is the interesting, yeah, adapt. Uh, the egocentric. Second one is the egocentric, you know, selfishness and outwit. It starts to disappear. Selfishness is the outwit, what? And if there's a logical thinking, it's a primitive, primitive very well. That means if you give the same glass, right? If you give the same glass, now the child knows even though the glass is tall or even though the glass is short, the child knows they are the same amount. So the child will be completely different. So that's why that is why you say the logical thinking is. This stage. So now I bring the psychology lesson because when the children come, you should be able to know that this child is at this stage and you know how to deal with it. You should be very much clear. When, when the child comes at uh, this kind of stage, you should be able to learn how to control it. Usually, after six, seven days, you put them into nursery and all, they, that time only they are having this logical thing. So what I'm talking about here is by doing, you know, by doing activities like we said in the hard work magic, you know, they try to develop their logical thinking. Okay, so uh, that's the, one of the main points that teachers should really understand. Okay, so the previous, as kids become better at thinking about how other people might view a situation. Now they start to think about others. They were ego thinking. They were selfish. They were selfish. They were ego thinking. They were ego thinking. They were ego thinking. They were ego thinking. At this point of view. So you all should be very much aware. Now this is the part where they have the ability to have a good habit and a bad habit. So this is the part uh, where, where you are to be very much careful about. Next one is begin to think logical about concrete events. And glass is the key word again. Then it's the part I know. Kochira me glass is the lakuna body unit. It's the same amount. There's no difference. Right? Begin to understand the concept of conversation. That the amount of liquid in a short white cup is equal to that in a tall glass, for example. Thinking becomes more logical and organized, but still very concrete. How much if they are still very concrete, but even though their concrete level is there, their knowledge logical thinking is increased. Their logical thinking is increased. Remember that. Yoga then I am then may chocolate together balla camera than he and the hand. Okay, so if they have the logical thing, right? They improve in the logical thinking. Begin using inductive knowledge or reasoning from specific information to a general principle. Now, this is the time they try to, you know, think logically and they try to reason and then they try to ask why, right? Why is this happening? Why should it be like this? Why can't it be like that? Like this. Right, that starts from here. Now, this is where their spoken is improved. The Islam unspeechfully, they try to learn from themselves. In Kulamit, they try to, uh, you know, be curious and they try to, you know, go and they try to do. But when it comes to here, they start to speak. When they start to speak, they used to communicate and they start to reason with you. Okay. The final stage is the formal operational stage. During this stage, the final stage of Piaget's theory involves in increasing knowledge, logical. 
So the logical thinking is developing the ability to use deductive reasoning and understanding of abstract ideas. They will be able to, you know, think. They, they, they will be able to understand the situation. They will be able to understand the ideas, right? At this point, adolescents and young adults become capable of seeing multiple potential solutions to solve problems. So this is the part we give any problems. They will be able to find solutions and, you know, okay, fine, I can do this. The brain development is improved, right? Now, during this stage, you are going to give something and ask the child to solve. Okay? So, what we have to do is when the child gets strong, you're going to explain it. Okay, this is wrong, this is wrong. Can you go? You are going to do an example and show. For example, if the math question, if, if there's a math question, like you know, you do an example and show. And then you ask it, and then you give some other question, right? After giving other questions, they will try to solve alone. Let them do alone. Learn, teach them to uh, study independently. Okay? Because from these stages onwards, they have to learn to stay alone. They have to do the activities alone. They have to, you know, most they should be able to stand on their feet. Not completely, right? Not like an adult, but at least through logical thinking. And they should be able to understand. Okay. Okay, so he begins to think abstractly and reason about potential, uh, sorry, hypothetical problems, begins to think more about moral, philosophical, ethical, social, and political issues that require theoretical and abstract reasoning. So here they try to reason uh, in a theoretical form. Right, they used to try to reason and they used to, you know, connect the science, maths, and they used to connect all the others and they used to try to reason in a very scientific way. Begins to use deductive knowledge or reasoning from a general principle to specific information. They try to read, they try to get the things and they try to work alone. Now, remember, all the students are not like this. We have to guide them to improve their logical thinking and understanding in studies, right? So we all have to try to teach them how to stand alone. So that is why I'm doing this for a small this one, so that when a child comes to your class, you should be able to teach them, you should teach them, and to do their activities alone, right? So I should be able to do that. Okay, so that's the final part. So I have taught you all the four stages. Do you all have any doubts so far? About the cognitive development or any other parts? So don't worry, today uh, you will be getting all the videos, you will be getting all the 